Uh, hi everybody, uh, my name is uh, Abdi Karabasi, I work for National Instruments. So today I'm going to talk about the uh, different uh, modeling technique that we use to model the capacitor uh, for fast uh, simulation, and fast optimization. Uh, so I have a two examples here that I use my technique. The first one is a 15 gigahertz duplexer with the eight and a half gigahertz crossover frequency. The second one is a 65 gigahertz duplexer with 35 gigahertz crossover frequency. The first example, uh, I modeled the 0402 package capacitor. And the second one, I use a, a broadside coupling as, a, uh, as my capacitor and I show how I model it. So duplexer and multiplexer are key component in the front end of the instrument for a broadband instrument. So, one example here is a real-time oscilloscope. So for real-time oscilloscope, we have a RF input. Let's say here is a DC to 65 gigahertz. And the duplexer is divide the frequency, DC to 35 and 35 to 65 gigahertz. And what we do, we don't convert and bring it back to DC to 30 gigahertz. And then we have a digital signal processing in the back end. And then we get the signal, we process it, and then show it real-time from DC to 65. 67 gigahertz. This is actually one example. So what is duplexer? Duplexer basically is nothing more than a low pass and high pass structure, which, the, which they're connected in one port, and then it discriminates the signal based on the frequency of the input. So I'm, I'm going to talk about the contiguous duplexer, which actually um, is a low pass and a high pass structure, and they have the same cutoff frequency. And it's very important that crossover frequency, we should make sure that it means it's 1 over 50. So these are the two duplexer examples that we have done in National Instrument. The first one is pure PCB based, and it's a 15 gigahertz duplexer with 8.5 gigahertz uh, crossover frequency. So as you see here, the input is port 1, and there is port two is a low pass, port three is a high pass. And uh, that actually shows the 3D uh, simulation environment. The second one is 65 gigahertz duplexer. And um, the crossover frequency here is uh, 35 gigahertz. So for, for high side, I'm going to focus on the high side. I'm going to only focus on the capacitor modeling. That's my main goal here. I'm not going to focus about the whole duplexer design. I'm going to be very brief, the duplexer design. So for 15 gigahertz, I use 0402 capacitor. And uh, if you want to, OK, so the high pass of duplexer needs a high Q series capacitor. At microwave frequency, I use 0402 capacitor. and. Uh, that's good enough up to 15 gigahertz here. And uh, for millimeter wave, the um, package capacitor, they have so much parasitic. And they are not practical all the way to 65 gigahertz. So what we did here, we use uh, something called broadside coupling. Or you can call it actually air gap capacitor. I'm going to talk about how I model these two in the 3D simulator using the AWR for fast optimization. So here is a 15 gigahertz duplexer. So our design specification was, I want to have a crossover at 8.5 gigahertz. And I want to have a match better than 8 dB all the way to 15 gigahertz. And my crossover frequency should be better than 5. And the loss better than 2 dB. Having this in mind, I'm, I'm doing my design. So I start with the lumped elements in AWR. And I simulate my design, and then I'm using MicroStrip, it's a PCB base, so I'm using MicroStrip for my implementation. So I'm using uh, radial stops and uh, narrow lines for my capacitor and inductor. And that's actually distributed. And I could do everything AWR. And for high pass side, I need a coupling capacitor, and I use 0402 capacitors. And I use them from AVX. So now, in order to see the in order to optimize this further, I need to take it to 3D simulator, right? To make sure what is going to be interaction between the two, two arms and everything. So 
Now the problem is, if I want to simulate this in a 3D simulator, I need to have a, I need to know the exact construction of the capacitor. So I need to know everything about the capacitor. And even if I know that contacting manufacturing, manufacturer of the capacitor, it's going to take a long time to do the 3D simulation, having those capacitors in my design. So then I'm looking for a, some way, somehow, to do a fast optimization in 3D simulator. So what I did is I used the modelytics model of my capacitor. In this example, it was an AVX 0.3 puff 042. And then I simulated an AWR. And then, second, I go to my 3D simulator, and I use the RLC model in my 3D simulator. And I play with the R, L, and C until I get it match to AWR, modelytics model. And my assumption here is the modelytics model is very close to the real world, because modelytics is based on the measurement with the PCB that I have. So it should be really accurate. So here, I get R and L and C in the uh, 3D simulator. And that's going to be much faster. So here uh, shows my the, 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 the curve. The first one is uh, S21. The second is S101. And as you see, this is, a this, is a two, this is actually the modelytics model in AWR versus uh, the 3D simulation. I change R, L, C, and I get a really good match. All the way to 15 gigahertz. As you see, it's, it's falling apart like around 16, 17 gigahertz. So probably I need to add more component if I want to go higher in frequency. And that's actually 0.3 puff AVX cap, which is readily available from modelytics. So now, having that RLC model, I'm using that in my uh, 3D simulator. As you see here is my simulator. That's the low pass section. That's a high pass section. And these are my caps, which are 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5. And here there are RLC, and the rest are distributed. So by doing that, I don't need to put the whole capacitor here, and then you know maybe something I'm not sure what is the construction going to be, how accurate it is. And another advantage here is going to be much faster. And the PCB is Roger 4350. So here's a simulation result. As we see, we, get, we can get better than 8 dB return loss, which is OK for our application. It's fine. All the way to 15 gigahertz. The crossover is better than 5 dB loss. And uh, this is actually satisfactory. So the implementation is on the way. And uh, we are working on it. But I don't have it here. I don't have any measured result. But I'm going to have it soon. All right. So I'm going to talk about the next topic, which is actually 65 gigahertz duplexer. So for 65 gigahertz, the auto one capacitor, we cannot really use them because the Q, the Q of the capacitor is low. And besides that, it's, they have so much parasitic, it's really impractical to model them all the way to 65 gigahertz. So instead, we're using the bright spot coupling, which is the, like an air gap capacitor. So I'm going to talk about how I model it. Before that, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the 65 gigahertz duplexer design. So here, uh, that's our uh, design specification. We want to have a 35 gigahertz crossover frequency. And then uh, we want to have 20 dB rejection, 20, 2 gigahertz away from center frequency. And we want to have only 2 dB insertion loss at all the way to 65 gigahertz. And the match should be better than 12 dB. So I start again with AWR simulation. I do the Chebyshev low pass, high pass, and I optimize it in AWR uh, using the lumped element. And here you can see the result. We optimize this right here. We get a good response, better than 15 dB return loss. Now I'm going to think about what kind of uh, structure I'm going to implement this on. It should be distributed, right? Um, the way that the, the structure we use is something so-called suspended strip line. The structure is a PCB in the middle. It's a dielectric with the two metal on top and bottom. So we can have a pattern here. And everything is enclosed in a wave guard structure. So because of that, it's very low radiation. And it's almost in air, so it's really low dispersion. Uh, it has a really high Q, and the group delay is flat because the even an odd mode is very close to each other. 
That's the reason we chose this structure. So I'm going to only focus on the high pass side series capacitor. So here's the model we use. We just use the overlap of the bottom and the uh, top layer of the metal. So in order to do a fast optimization, uh, instead of drawing everything in 3D simulator and run the optimization, and that would take like uh, for a few days, instead of doing that, we model this. We model this as a pi circuit. So how am I, how am I gonna get this uh, CPCS information? So what I do, I go to 3D simulator, simulate this, and then from there I get the Y parameter. And since I have a Y parameter, I can calculate my uh, capacitor value here for modeling this guy. And then I feed back I get this information, put it back in AWR, and optimize it in AWR, and then go one further and progress it, and go one further step, and I use all my uh, component there and optimize it in AWR. And for final uh, optimization, then I go to 3D simulator, okay? So the initial optimization was in AWR, based on the parameter that we extract from 3D model. And the final optimization was carried in 3D simulator. This is much faster technique than doing everything in the 3D simulator. Because we should, do, we should simulate from DC all the way to 65 gigahertz. And it's gonna take a long time to do optimization. But AWR is much faster here. This is actually the simulation result of my uh, duplexer. So it's Input is DC to 65, the output is DC. The low pass side is DC to 35, the high pass side is 35 to 65 gigahertz. I didn't talk about the detail here, but these are basically lambda over four stop, and these are like open stop, and these are the, these are the broad side capacitor that I model right here. And as you see, the, that shows the field progression from port one to port two and port three. Okay, how we implement this? Here it is. We're using like a PCB, and top and bottom of the PCB, it has metallized, it has the structure in it, right here. And then we use a recessed cavity here, in the metal top and bottom. And then we put this PCB between this two top and bottom metal. And then that creates a, a suspended strip line structure. Now, as you see here, there's a lot of vias here. We should make sure that vias are closely spaced should be at least lambda over 20 at highest frequency of operation in order to make sure we have a good uh, ground. And it's, we should make sure it's not inductive. So we should have a lot of ground vias here. And this actually in the middle, that's bottom, that's the top side, and they, we put them on top of each other. And that's actually the finished part. Another thing we did here, because this structure, there is some tolerance associated with it. Like for example, if we have 0.5, mill uh, tolerance on the PCB, and there's some mechanical tolerance on the top and bottom. So we put some tuning screws for tuning our, our dot pixel at the end. So here I measure result versus simulation as parameters. As you see, you have really good agreement uh, between the simulation and the measure. So as you see, insertion loss is pretty good, and insertion loss is also very it is, is good, it's a good agreement. And there is some, a little bit of shift between simulation and the, uh, and the final measure. And that's because when we simulate, we didn't consider uh, like a connectors and the, the, the tuning screws and all those things. And that's the reason behind it. So here, I'm gonna conclude that we introduced two different capacitor modeling techniques for fast optimization. The first one was how to do a fast optimization for a package capacitor using AWR, optimize the AWR, and only do a final verification optimization in the, uh, CS, in the, in the 3D simulator. And I showed the simulation result for 15 gigahertz duplexer, and also for 65 gigahertz, I show how we model it using the 3D simulator and do optimization in AWR, and also we show the experimental result. So 
thanks so much. Thanks for attending my talk. And I wish to thank to uh, Dr. Kano and Erfan, which is not here, for the great job. Thank you.